Hi everyone, it's Agnes and I've got a viewer's question from Gloria today. Now Gloria, you asked. I was checking out some of your old interviews from Dan where you talked about how you just believed you were going to travel even though you didn't know how. And you said how you just had blind faith. I was thinking maybe you could expand on the topic of blind faith when you just believe despite the obstacles. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about that. And I will talk from experience because that's always where I can be certain that I'm sharing with you something that I understand fully. So, in the instance of traveling, I was feeling an intense feeling of feeling trapped and suffocated at the time. And I was working in something that was extremely creative that I enjoyed, but I wanted to be able to, at this particular time, travel to see my family in France because I knew that some people were getting older and getting sick. And I thought, if I want to see these people before they die, I need to create this ability to be able to go back and forth and at that point it was Sydney to France. So I decided that I would make a very bold statement at the time because I didn't have the money nor that did I have the freedom to be able to do this. I said to myself I now take in, in 2016 because this was 2015 I now take in 2016 four trips fully paid. Now, after I made that statement, I laughed because it was like, yeah, how the heck's that going to happen? And I could see very clearly all my doubt, my lack of faith, my lack of belief, and my lack of believing in myself to be able to pull it off. So I think the blind faith really came in firstly in making that very, very, very first statement because it was so far from where I was standing, but you have to start somewhere and that was where I started, okay, was making that statement. Now, the second thing I did was I had a suitcase and I left it in my bedroom open with the lid open and I packed some clothes. And it was clothes to suit the climate of where I wanted to go in France. And what I did was I got my passport ready. At that stage, I had one passport and I had it ready. I had, you know, done what I needed to do to get the passport sometime before because I wanted to get it done before there was any pressure of me wanting to go. So I took my time in doing the passport. Now, at that time, the suitcase was a visual reminder of the possibilities, okay? It was the possibility of going somewhere. It was the visual of you are going somewhere and you are going somewhere soon because you don't usually pack a suitcase until you're about, you know, less than a week ready to go. That's usually when most people pack. So this was saying to me, you're going soon, you're going soon, you're going soon, you're going soon. So despite the obstacles of not knowing how or when, I knew that the law of attraction would respond to my projections and my assumptions. So I worked very heavily with the law of assumption and I assumed I was going. I tried to get into the state, as Neville Goddard says, the new man, which was I'm traveling, which means I have money, which implies that I am going back and forth when I want. So I just tried to get into that state as best I could from where I was standing, which was feeling incredibly trapped and none of those things I was feeling, none. So you have to start somewhere. So that really, really helped me, those two things. And also I kept saying, and I know I've shared this before, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free. Because I knew that if I felt free, that the money would come. I had to change my feeling trapped to feeling free. Now, that's not an easy feat when you are feeling incredibly trapped at work and feeling suffocated and not wanting to go there anymore. I know many of you are in those situations. So I just kept imagining as I walked on the beach because I was in Sydney at that time, 
feeling the absolute freedom of walking on the beach and I could do that after work I could do that on weekends because I did have some little pockets of freedom even though I felt trapped part of the time or a big part of the time I still had little pockets of freedom and that's what I was trying to focus on was that feeling of freedom feeling of freedom as I walked on the beach I felt the wind in my hair Oh, the sun on my face, the sand between my toes, I'd roll up my pants and I'd let the water come up to my ankles and I was like, oh, I am free, I am free, I am free. So that's how I did it with that, Gloria. Good question. Now I'm going to read a little bit more about what you said. Sometimes we get stuck on various techniques, continuously searching for better and faster ways to manifest. Obsessively looking for answers, yes new techniques on and we stay in the how am I going to get their mode with overthinking we don't even notice that we're stuck with all of that forgetting that sometimes pure faith is the answer letting go and believing keeping it simple that approach helped me a lot and I talk every day with a lot of people who are stuck with finding a better coach a better technique and it is so sad to see someone running in circles hope you will say something about it if you find it interesting Thank you for the beautiful new no music meditations, especially the ones with affirmations about peace and allowing. It helped me a lot. Ah, well, thank you, Gloria. That's good. I'm glad it's helped you. So I want to go back to something else you've said here in the second part of your email. I think there's two halves of a nut, okay, for this all law of attraction manifesting, you know, that we talk about. And there's so much more to manifesting the law of attraction. Law of attraction is only one law. I did do a YouTube on four laws. I will put the link to that YouTube down below for those of you that want to look at not just the law of attraction. And I will also put the link down below for my personal manifesting story because there were stages within that that I actually YouTubed and recorded while it was happening. So you can see where my head was at, how I was still having some doubt, struggling with certain things, but I was still, as I'd get an inch further, I would record and an inch further and I'd record. So you can see the transition of where I was then to obviously where I am now. So the two halves of the nut. The first half is the techniques, okay? You have techniques such as Visualizing, meditation, uh, vision boards, scripting, rubbing out technique, whispering technique, the focus wheel, which comes from Abraham Hicks. There's many, many different techniques you can use. So I see all of that as one half of the nut. Okay. Now, a lot of people get to that point and they don't get any further because they get exhausted in doing those sorts of things. Okay. Now, the second half of the nut comes in. Second half of the nut is the faith, the letting go, the surrender, and the allowing. These are all internal. They look like they're actions if you're doing them internally, but they're inactivity as in external action. Okay? But all of these four things that I just mentioned they are they allow the techniques to become four-dimensional okay they come into the world through allowing them to hatch through incubation you can't just do technique after technique after technique after technique you have to allow the thing to breathe okay so it's like planting seeds you plant you water then the sun comes the rain comes but you're not hovering over trying to dig up the seed and this has its natural cycle just like nature does you do the techniques you let go you surrender and you allow you allow the universe time God source whatever word you want to use to bring it into fruition it has a cycle like nature where you see the little leaf. Well, first you see the little brown stick with no leaves. Then you see the little green leaf. It gets into a bigger green leaf. It grows a flower. The flower grows a fruit. The fruit has to ripen and then you pick it and eat it. And this is the same. Things take time. 
yes, you can quantum jump and jump and quantum leap if you if you want to go into all of that. And some things can happen quickly. But even the things that happen quickly, it's not in your time. It's in the time of finally getting to the place where you are in the new man, as Neville says, the new state. So you've gone from feeling poor to feeling wealthy. You've gone from being preoccupied with money to letting go of being preoccupied with money. It's like when you have more money, you don't think about money all the time. Whereas when you're poor, you're fixated and preoccupied with how's it going to come? Where's it going to come? How can I get more? You got this little, your eyes are darting around because you're trying to work out stuff. When you get to the place where you have more faith, more belief, more letting go, more surrender, more allowing, then the seeds can sprout. Okay, so yes, the techniques are great, but the silent partner or the other half of the nut is those things. And I think that's the missing piece for a lot of people, like self-love is the missing piece for a lot of people. So if you can work on your self-love, do a bit of the techniques and let go and allow, make sure you sleep enough, make sure you're not exhausted, make sure you're rested, make sure you take time slow things down stop accelerating because acceleration is I'm not happy here I need to get over there where my stuff is and you've got to be in a good state here for that to come towards you the stuff the person the money the trip okay the freedom so it's really about calming yourself down mentally. Calm yourself down mentally. Do what it takes to calm yourself down mentally. That will then go in and calm you down emotionally. <sighs> then the letting go happens. Then the allowing happens. Then the manifestation can happen. Okay? So, good question, Gloria. I really like that. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll put those YouTubes down below for those of you that want to do a little bit more. Just learning. I will also put the meditation for letting go, surrender, and allowing, because I think many of you are up to that point now where you've done techniques, done techniques, done techniques, done techniques, and you're bang, hitting the wall. Okay, so... Next phase, learn the other half of the nut. It is, I think, extremely important in manifesting. And it has been the bit that once I finally understood it, not just understood it, but got it, got it, got it, do it. Whew. That's when my manifestations accelerated. Okay? I did do a YouTube on accelerated manifesting too. I'll put that down below for those of you as well. Ciao, everybody. See you in the next one.